This video will offer a quick review of Universal Design for Learning, or UDL, moving quickly into how UDL relates to motivation and engagement in learners. Then we'll discuss how we use UDL principles in our courses to help students get and stay motivated. You'll find links in the description of this video to other UDL-related videos and a companion webpage that points to specific instructional tools and technologies that can be used to achieve these goals. CAST.org, the leading organization promoting UDL, says that UDL principles guide design of learning environments with a deep understanding and appreciation for individual variability. The principles and guidelines of UDL help us identify and remove barriers to learning, barriers that are essentially artifacts of instruction that are unrelated to the achievement of the stated learning objectives of the course. UDL guides designed by looking at three different principles, engagement, representation, and action and expression. This video will focus on how applying UDL principles can help remove barriers to motivation and engagement and smooth the pathway to interest and persistence in our students. It's unrealistic and really unnecessary to completely overhaul your course in order to start applying UDL principles. Instead, you might start by identifying known pinch points where your students struggle to engage or find motivation. Are there particular topics, instructional materials, learning activities, assessments, discussions? Or maybe you're aware of an underrepresented group in your field and want to examine your course for barriers for that group, in particular in order to increase equity and inclusion in your field. There's been quite a lot of research done on learner motivation. Some current theories include the expectancy value cost model, the ARCS model, and self-determination theory. The important thing to know is that there are a lot of themes in these theories that relate to universal design for learning. The themes and strategies highlighted in this video will include the importance of learner choice and autonomy, the importance of inclusion and belonging, and the importance of salience and sustained effort. Take a moment to view this Calvin and Hobbes comic strip from October 1989. In this scene, Calvin's dad is concerned about Calvin's report card, and Calvin explains that he doesn't like school. His dad counters that Calvin seems to like to read and learn, as evidenced by his voraciously consuming books about dinosaurs. Calvin counters that when well, school, they're not learning about dinosaurs. Clearly, Calvin understands that when he has a choice about what he's reading, reading and learning can be fun. Learner autonomy is about giving students more choice and control over how they achieve the learning objectives for the course. While they cannot and should not have choice over the learning objectives for the course, they can be given opportunities to choose how they get there. In this example, if the learning objective is to improve reading skills or improve reading comprehension or something similar, then allowing Calvin to read something he's interested in could make him more motivated and successful, especially since he's clearly capable of doing it when he's interested. Learner autonomy is a concept that's already popular in language learning, as described by Benson. Students are most engaged when they're learning aspects of a language that they feel will be useful or are relevant to their goals. Even beyond the UDL framework, Education philosophers like Paulo Fieri have framed learner autonomy as an ethical issue which empowers students and shows respect for their role in their own learning. So how can we optimize students' sense of ownership? Where it makes sense, we can build in opportunities for student choice. One way to do this is to let them choose the difficulty of an activity or assignment. This doesn't necessarily mean providing an easy option. A big focus of UDL is finding ways we can challenge gifted students and help keep them engaged with learning. Providing an extra challenge in an assignment might appeal to some students. Other factors like complexity or logistical overhead might make an assignment more or less difficult for a student. In this case, you can leave some of those aspects up to choice and let students decide what they want to take on. You can also provide options for the types of assignments students complete. A 2017 study by Hanowitz et al describes online instructors who designed their course to include cafeteria-style assignments. Students could pick from a large pool of different assignments with a minimum number needed to be completed to earn an A. Assignments included traditional research papers, but also things like hands-on projects to demonstrate skill mastery. Students completed all different kinds of assignments and had positive feedback for this approach, but the most interesting thing was that in the study, over 30% of students completed even more than the required number of assignments for an A. We can also provide choice in the types of rewards students can earn. A common example of this is contract grading, where students are told upfront what is required for each grade level. So what's required for an A, what's required for a B, etc. And students can choose what grade they want to earn. Other examples of this include giving options to earn credentials or badges by meeting certain criteria, or including gamification aspects so that students can choose to engage in a gamified way. A really easy way to increase autonomy is to give students choices when it comes to content and context to the extent that it makes sense for your course. 
this is like the Calvin and Hobbes example. So if they have to write a paper, let them choose the topic. If they're working with a case or scenario, let them choose that case. If they have to read the book, well, maybe just let Calvin read the book about dinosaurs. Likewise, if you can't provide choices with what the assignment is, maybe you can let them choose how they create it. If it's a paper, let them create it in Word, Pages, InDesign, or a Google Doc. If they're submitting a video, let them choose how they record and edit it. Even just giving them a choice when it comes to how they format their assignments can increase their feeling of ownership and help them feel more invested. Finally, you can include choices when it comes to planning and timelines. And this also supports other UDL aspects like self-regulation and goal setting. For example, you could let students choose how they sequence pieces of an assignment or give them flexible deadlines or milestones so that they can set due dates that will work for them. You may want to pause the video now and consider the pinch points you've identified. Are there ways that you can provide choice that might increase student engagement and motivation? Belonging is identified by Lewis et al. in 2016 as the extent to which individuals feel like a valued, accepted, and legitimate member in their academic domain. Zumbrun et al. in 2014 found that supportive classroom environments led to enhanced feelings of belonging, which increased student motivation, achievement, and engagement. Our classrooms are diverse. Students vary in background, ethnicity, gender identity, and sex, disability status, native language, marital status, past and present trauma, employment status, parental status, age, the list goes on. If a student's experience in the classroom makes them feel excluded due to one of their many identities, they will find it harder to feel like they belong and thus find motivation. We don't have to know everything about our students' identities and customize our teaching. Applying this principle is more about welcoming all students and building trust within the classroom allowing student voices and experiences to enrich the learning environment, and monitoring content for possible threats or distractions or messages that might be non-inclusive. Here are some ways you might ensure that all your learners feel like they belong in your class. Explicitly set and enforce student expectations for interactions and classroom community. State, all students belong here. All student voices and experiences are valuable. Give students time to get to know each other and pay attention to any dynamics that might need to be addressed. Be authentic yourself. Your students need to see that successful people can struggle and successful people have lives outside of work. Share your personal experiences or your academic journey. You might review the symbols, images, and examples you use in your course. Whose experiences are represented? How can you make sure that you've diversified those experiences? Highlight societal and environmental implications of your course material, especially those that might have disparate impacts on different groups and invite learners to share their own life experiences that relate to topics. Just be sure not to make assumptions about students' experiences based on identities that you think they may hold. Again, you may want to pause the video now and consider the pinch points you've identified. Are there any that might be related to whether all students truly feel they belong in your class or discipline? Can you work to make your course more inclusive and supportive for all students? Once you've laid the groundwork to promote student motivation, students must stay focused on achieving the objectives for the course. Learners can vary in how they are engaged or motivated to learn. One key component of this is student self-regulation and self-determination. Courses that address self-regulation explicitly will be most successful in applying these UDL principles, and we do that through things like goal setting and providing feedback. The other piece of this is that students are most engaged when activities are relevant and valuable to their interests and goals, including reminders of this and helping students draw connections between the activities and their value throughout your course will help sustain effort and motivation. One key way to optimize salience and effort is to use authentic activities. No one likes to feel like they're doing busy work, but sometimes students can't see the connections between the work they're doing in your class and how it relates to their career or personal goals. Now, these goals will vary for each person, but if they can understand how the lessons they're doing relate to a real-world context, they're going to be more engaged with that task. This can also include using real case studies and examples, or even providing students the opportunity to work with real clients or on-site in a real application setting. Setting goals is a big piece of this as well. Students like to feel like they're improving and making progress, but don't always take the time to reflect or track that progress. We can help them out with this and build that sense of accomplishment just by prompting them or giving them opportunities to think about their performance and goals. The final big piece of this is feedback. Mastery-oriented feedback is focused on guiding students to successful long-term habits by emphasizing effort, practice, and improvement. This feedback might look like encouraging students to use helpful strategies or supports, acknowledging their effort, and making feedback frequent, timely, specific, and substantive. In addition, we can support self-regulation with how we provide feedback by modeling and prompting self-evaluation in our feedback and providing helpful aids and charts for tracking progress. 
Once again, you may want to pause the video one last time and consider if you can use more authentic activities or make more real-world connections, help learners set and track their goals, or provide more mastery-oriented feedback in order to boost learner motivation. Thank you for watching this video. Once again, you'll find links in the description of this video to other UDL-related videos and a companion web page that points to specific instructional tools and technologies that can be used to achieve the goals discussed in this video.